Blessed be thou, O Lord God of the universe, who hath given this bird wisdom to distinguish day from night. That's gratitude. You do a good deed, and what's your reward? Exactly. your idea of a joke? Have you forgotten what happened Sabbath before last between here and Jericho? Two hundred zealots crucified for bearing arms. Two hundred crosses against the sky. And a few Roman soldiers with a dagger like this in their hearts. Yes, Romans can be killed too, like other men. But we won't break the power of Rome by wearing knives in our sleeves. Orders from Jerusalem are to keep our weapons concealed from now on. Until we need them. There. That'll be safer there with mine. Yeah, let me help you. You'll be safer too. Big brother. Oh, forget that. I'm not talking to you as your brother now. Wasn't I chosen head of the zealots in this village? Yes, Joel, but you... Then I mean to be obeyed. The lion doesn't bare his fangs until he's ready to strike. For us to speak, yes, but a beggar can speak to anyone. Your lips are like a thread of scarlet and your mouth is comely. You're altogether beautiful, my love. Joel, you shouldn't say such What's from the Song of Solomon? I know, but... Well, that's enough, isn't it? No, there's much more. I'll say it all for you. Oh, no, no. Not now. Yalla! Yalla! Finished the threshing this morning. I'd like to be working in the fields instead. Working in the fields, you, the scholar of the family? Scholar. him by the road at dawn. He had bound up his wound and was able to give me the name of his village, which lies about one league to the north. More than that, he hadn't the strength to say. That's good. It's good to be among friends after the Romans. Romans? They arrested me, but I couldn't pay the tax. A chain on my wrist. Then I stumbled and fell. A soldier drew his sword. Now I have no hand. The dogs, the filthy heathen. Be warned, they are coming. But why? What is this tax you speak of? You haven't heard? All Judea is being taxed in punishment of the recent revolt. We must drive these Roman beasts out of our land. But what can we do? We're without a leader to turn to. We're helpless. A nation without a king 
is a nation lost. A nation lost. He's right. It looks as if we'll need our weapons. Call the zealots together and we'll... Wait, Zadok. Wait? What for? You organize the zealots in this village. You preach resistance to Rome yet now, you say... We're not ready to resist. Judea was a nation once. Someday she will be again. I say wait and work for that day. Go on to the fields. I'll tell father of this. Shalom, Abba. Shalom. Now, my son, we'll take up your study. Incline thine ears unto wisdom. Father, I... And apply thy heart to understanding. I have news, important to the village. Huh? The Romans have laid a new tax on our people. How? When did you hear this? Just now. We're a merchant who stopped within our gates. He had with him an escaped prisoner. Prisoner? Yes, this time it seems they're taking prisoners as well as money. Peace, Joel. This evil is still distant from us. But, Father, when they come here, as they will... We can't stop them. Not now, but we ought to begin to prepare ourselves. But we are prepared. Is not the Lord with us always? Our only duty is to follow his holy law. Yes, you're a scholar, a scribe, and as you will be. <laughs> but we need a king in Israel. Is it not written that someday there will come a Messiah to deliver us? Someday. We need the Messiah now. When the time is ripe, he will come. <laughs> Wearing the crown of David. And with the sword of David in his hand, yes. Since he created his people, the Lord has not deserted us. He has seen us through a thousand tribulations. Slavery, oppression, poverty, the hatred of tyrants. Do you think he will abandon us now? I have no fear. This trouble that threatens us now is only a shadow that will pass. Sit down, my son. Yes, Abba. Time has come to review your knowledge. We'll start with the generations of Shem. The generations of my father, I could recite those in my sleep. Proceed. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad 500 years and begat sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived 5 and 30 years and begat Selah. And Arphaxad lived after he begat Selah 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Abra lived four and thirty years and beget... Go on. Go on. Beget, uh... Aber. Aber. And Selah lived after he beget Aber four hundred and three years and beget sons and daughters. And Aber lived four and thirty years and beget... <laughs> Joel. Father, what's the good of learning all this? Good? It's the history of Israel, a sacred heritage. Yes, but to me, all these names and dates are as dry as the sands of Kidron. They... Excuse me, Rabbi. Jamuel, the carpet merchant, is here to see you. Oh, I'll come at once. <laughs> Bring food and wine, Leah. Yes, Rabbi. The best wine. Yes, Rabbi. Continue with your studies, Joel. Did you say it was Jemuel? Yes. Jemuel, the father of Tamar? He always has been. Ah, uh, you are fortunate, Lemek, to have two fine sons. Zedek. And Joel is an excellent young man. Joel has possibilities. Mm. He also has his faults. He's rather irresponsible, visionary, and a bit unruly. Yet. I have great hopes of Joel. It's my wish, and it was his mother's before she died, that someday our firstborn should go up to study in Jerusalem. Mm. I want Joel to follow in my footsteps as a scribe. Oh, but of course, a young man must marry and settle down, no matter what his profession is. Huh? Mm. Ah, yes. 
You are blessed in your sons. I, unhappily, have nothing but daughters. Huh? It takes a daughter to make a wife. What <laughs> wisdom, <laughs> Rabbi. <laughs> and you know, Tamar, my eldest, is a marriageable age. Already I've had several offers for her hand. Well, I don't wonder. No doubt you have already arranged a suitable match. Uh, my mind is still open. Sure. Mm. Ah. Of course, you would provide your daughter with a generous dowry. Oh, yes, I... Yes, of course, in these hard times, I don't... Well? Well, shall we say a chest of fine linen? Uh, a carpet of the best quality? Tamar herself is weaving it now. A yoke of young oxen? And a flock of seven goats. Seven goats? Out of all your herd? But uh, my herd has been diminished lately by, by wild dogs and... Uh, Seven goats? Nah. Eight. Nah. Look, a dozen goats. Now is a flock. Two dozen. A dozen and a half. Two dozen. Two dozen? Two dozen. Ah! For the honor of being allied with your house in marriage, scribe, two dozen goats. <laughs> the terms are most generous. <laughs> no. Uh... <coughs> you pardon me. A seed in my throat. Leah, hurry with the wine. <coughs> what are you doing? Minding my own business. You ought to be at your learning. I'm learning. young man. Takes after his father. Takes after someone else, if you ask me. Oh, I'm studying. Want to hear the generations of Shem? What? Shem was a hundred years old and began our facts at two years after the flood. Tomorrow, I've got something. To, I've heard something. And Shem lived up to Begat our facts at 500 years. And Begat sons and daughters. <laughs> and our facts had lived five and thirty years and Begat. Begat. No one so beautiful as Tamar. Is that in your scroll? I've got to talk to you. I've got to tell you about. About Shem? No. About us. Us? Has someone been gossiping? It isn't gossip. It's wonderful. But, Joel, there will be gossip. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Can't you stop working for a moment? I'm making a carpet to give to my husband when I have one. Well, I can't tell you here. What, Joel? Tamar. No, maybe you'd better not. Please go. Father will be so angry if he... It's the time of year to pick herbs. This afternoon, during the hour of rest, the little ravine beyond the threshing. But I couldn't. I wouldn't dare. Come on! Oh, Mother, I must go. I can't see. It's Nathan, the innkeeper. You know, he's been to Tiberius to take the baths. He'll be full of news. Come here. 
Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, what's the news from the north? <laughs> the best news is that I left the stiffness of my limbs at the hot springs of Tiberius. Uh, what about the new tax? 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 Now, let me see. I, I did hear something about a tax. Oh, but... But, but let me tell you this. After the first day, I could move one finger, the second day, two fingers, and the third day... <laughs> we know. Three fingers. <laughs> but what news? Yes, did you see any soldiers on the road? Oh, there, there, there are always soldiers on the road. But then my arms uh, and my legs, <laughs> they were... Did you meet any robbers? No, 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 no robbers. You go all the way to Tiberius and you have nothing to report. Oh, I, I didn't say that. Oh, come, come, tell us, Nathan. Come, Nathan, tell us the news. What if I were to tell you that a king had appeared in Israel? A king? Mm. Did you see him? No, I, I, I didn't see him. But one of his followers, a man called John, told me that his master would soon proclaim himself king of the Jews. Are you sure? Is it true, Nathan? Well, I believe this man, John, he, he spoke with conviction. He told me that his master had gathered a multitude around him and that they called him the Messiah. Messiah? Uh, you yes. speak of a king? A Messiah? Who is he? How do men call him? Why, he's called Jesus, the son of Joseph, the Galilean. So, is that the one, eh? <laughs> As though we all hadn't heard of him, eh? <laughs> uh, maybe you don't know the man I mean. But I do. A carpenter from Nazareth. <laughs> what good thing ever came out of Nazareth? <laughs> well, they say he's created a great stir among the people of Galilee. A trickster. A magician. A preaching carpenter who breaks the laws of the Sabbath. But, but his follower John says that he's well learned in the law. Impossible. I'd like nothing better than to question him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll have the chance. John said he would pass this way. I hope so. <laughs> Nathan, do you believe in this man, Jesus? Why? Because, uh, well, he has the multitude with him. Hundreds of people who will soon become thousands. Uh, a veritable army. An army for Israel. Tamar! What a lucky chance our meeting like this. I remembered it was the time of year to pick herbs. Oh. Are you hurt? Well, at least you're here, and now I can tell you. Do you know, I think this is the first time in our lives we've ever been alone. Yes. Oh, don't be frightened. I'm not. Because I... we're, we're betrothed, Tamar. Betrothed? Yes, that's what I had to tell you. Your father and mine have arranged our marriage. I heard them talking about it this morning. Joel, is it true? Did your father tell you? Not yet, but he will. But I can't believe. Well, it's quite logical. After all, in this whole village, you're the most beautiful and I'm the most... Well, at least the most intelligent. Yes. Still, I... I can't believe that I'm to be your wife. My wife. Oh, Tamar. What, Joe? Nothing, just Tamar. You know, a man's mind is like a house that's always building. He builds a room for every hope he has. One for his success, his fame, his dreams. One for his love for his country. But then he finds a woman he loves and he knows that the whole house is for her. A woman isn't like that. Her heart is her house, and it's an empty house until her love walks in.
right by the ravine. I'll go through the fields. It's true. Our village is not to escape the Romans. They're only a handful. They feel sure we won't attack them. They may be mistaken. What are we standing here for? Let's get back to the village. Find Joel. from Herod, Tetrarch of Galilee, and from Pontius Pilate, Procurator of Judea. Now hear ye, that whereas there have been disorders in the land, including armed strife against the rule of Rome, it is hereby decreed that the people of Judea shall pay an extraordinary tax. As follows. For each household, five shekels of silver, which shall be paid into the hands of the tax gatherer. You, as of this day. We've already paid our taxes. This is a special tax. We're poor people, workmen and farmers. Where would we get silver? You know very well we won't have any silver until the harvest is over. Peace, fellow. Your governors have already thought of that. Huh? Stop your sniveling. Whereas, if any man shall not be able to pay in silver coin, he shall be taken into protective custody and held and held until his debt be discharged by the labor of his hands in the service of the state. That means slavery, death in the Roman galleys. You talk of disorders. There'll be worse disorders Wait. if Wait. You... What's your name? Zadok, son of the scribe. Zadok, son of the scribe. What are you howling about? Your father will pay your taxes. Scribes always have money. <laughs> this done by order of Imperial Rome issued in the fourth month of the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius, Emperor. Oh, for the love of Jupiter, wipe your nose. I'll be at my usual place in the square to receive payments in silver. I come from my house prepared. Joel, my son, take this and pay it out to the last shekel. It is all I have. Let each man give according to his means. Yes. yes. You'd better come with me while I pay these vultures. No. Remember what I said. You know what it means to be a soldier? No. It means your feet hurt. Uh, uh, Jemuel. Jemuel. Uh, eh, carpet merchant. Uh, but this year I've only been selling little carpets. Huh? I... Married? Mm. Five children? Mm. Uh, females. Yes. Uh, so this is for me, for my wife, and for my family. One, two, three. Four. Any reduction for a married daughter? Uh, uh, how long married? Well, she isn't exactly... We, we haven't... Well, 
Uh, she's going to be married very soon. Then she isn't married. Yeah, but I've paid her dowry practically. Ah! Dog of dust. I'm only trying to save a little so I can help a less fortunate neighbor. Free. <laughs> In the name of Lamech, the scribe. Yeah, that's enough to pay for ten households. See that it does. Mark it on your slate. Doesn't your conscience ever hurt? No, it's my feet. What do you do for sore feet, fellow? Bathe them in water and anoint them with oil. Thanks, friend. Friend to a Roman. <laughs> These men were trying to escape over the wall. Under arrest. Put a guard over. Bring them along. Don't hold them. We'll pay the tax somehow. They try to escape. That's a crime against Rome. Is it a crime to be poor? To love liberty? Enough. If you hadn't told me what to do for my feet, I'd send you along with them. I don't suppose you'd fight a man without your sword. No. <laughs> oh, why'd you do it? Keep you from making a fool of yourself. I'll kill him for this. Stop talking nonsense. Do you still say do nothing? Yes. You see only what's before your eyes. I'm trying to look beyond. If you can't understand that, at least obey orders, do you hear? Zadok. What? What is it, Nathan? My purse is empty, but my heart is full. If a patriot should want to join with other patriots for the good of Israel, Swear eternal enmity to Rome. I swear. By this covenant of blood, I declare Nathan the innkeeper our brother. From now on, his life, like ours, is given to freedom for Israel. I you. I've called you together without telling my brother. I don't agree with his policy of waiting. I say attack a Roman any time you can. You're right. This is a time for action. Yes, if we could set the prisoners free. We must set them free. Better to die than rot in the Roman galleys. Right, right, right. 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 Then you're all with me? Yes. Aye. Right. Good. First, we must be sure that the centurion is well entertained this evening. You'll take care of that, Nathan. With pleasure. Then, when night has fallen, after the evening meal... Sir. My mother's jewels. Your father had them from his father and gave them to your mother when they were betrothed. Thou, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who hath sanctified us with his commandments. Amen. Amen. My sons, this has been a day of sadness for our village, but it has its thread of joy, a thread that runs through all the tapestry of life. This thread must not be broken. I'm an old man full of years. 
time I saw my line carried on and my name perpetuated. Today, I talked with Jemuel, the father of Tamar, with regard to a marriage between our houses. The arrangements have been concluded. The betrothal will follow. I hope this pleases you, my son. You mean I? I am to marry Tamar? So Jemuel and I have decided. These jewels will be your gift to her. Father, you say that Tamar and Zadok are to be... Yes. But I thought that I... It's usual for the older son to be married before the younger. True. In fact, Jemuel first suggested that you should marry Tamar. Well, then why? But on consideration, realizing that you'd be many years in Jerusalem studying, Jemuel decided he'd rather see his grandchildren born here at home. But, Father... This also fell in with my plans. Oh, time enough for you to marry when you've become a scribe and a rabbi of your people. Well, then you mean that... Tamar. Tamar will come to live in our house. She'll be a sister to you and a good wife to you, my son. As you will, father. So be it. You'll drink to this betrothal. Joel. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, who giveth all good things. Blessed be the fruit of thy vineyards, the sun on the grape that bringeth to our lips this sweet refreshment. Uh, you're drinking a good deal, my friend. I can't neglect the hospitality of our good host. But uh, are you sure the prisoners are well guarded? When I take prisoners, they don't escape alive. Uh, just the same. I've got an uncomfortable feeling. It's that sour cabbage you eat. No, I'm serious. I can smell danger. <laughs> you can't smell anything. But I'm afraid. You're always afraid. You've got the heart and the nose of a rabbit. These people won't make any trouble. Well, they might attack you. Oh. They won't attack the Roman Empire. That's me. Father just told me. We're not bound by our father's bargaining. Yes, we are. Their word is law. What's given it can't be broken. Our love can't be broken. Our love is great to us. The law of our fathers is greater. Tomorrow, I won't give you up. I want you. I want you too, but... We'll go away together. Leave the village. We'll go tonight. Tonight? Oh, how could we? Where could we? The fire in the square.
I am, but at least the prisoners are free. You've gone behind my back, you. Oh! In the name of Rome! Saturnian! Go on, each way, all of you, go! Stop your yapping. Claudian! Sir, you see, the birds have flown. But, sir, I, I thought that the... You thought. You mean you didn't think. You didn't see any men standing around the fire, did you? It was only a trick in you. Well, why don't you speak? Give me leave and I'll put every man in this village to the sword. Bloodthirsty, isn't he? Take your men to the inn. Stand guard over the silver. Uh, I thought you said you never lost a prisoner. Don't bother me, I'm thinking. Mm. Uh, this escape is a disgrace to Rome. I want those prisoners. Yeah, but how can you... Give them time. They'll come home to roost. Not while you're here. Of course not. We will draw from the village tomorrow. And a fortnight we'll come back in force. Hmm. Dagger. It's the weapon of zealots. So it was their work. In that case, when we come back, I'll let Claudian indulge his appetite for slaughter. We'll clean out this nest of vipers. I must have dropped it outside. He did. The centurion picked it up. A sword in his hand. I heard him say we'll clean out this nest of vipers. Then there's only one thing to do. Strike before he does. He'll wait until morning. The Romans don't like working in the dark. He'll wait longer than that. He hasn't enough men to make his move now. The centurion's no fool. He's in no hurry. But sooner or later, he'll take revenge for this night's nice work. Then why wait? We outnumber the Romans. What's the matter, Joel? Have you lost your nerve? You're supposed to be our leader. But you seem to have no stomach for doing anything. We need a new leader. Yeah, yeah. pack of sheep, threatened by wolves. Uh, and you want a new shepherd? Yeah. Lion. All right. But hear me first. I've said you do nothing. I've said wait. Not because my nerve was gone and my stomach was weak, but because I had an idea. Now listen. This morning, while most of you were in the fields, Nathan brought word of a certain man in the north, a Galilean, who's gathering the people around him. Multitudes who follow him and are already calling the king of the Jews. I had made up my mind to go and seek this man. Well, he may be the Messiah we've all been praying for. It seems to me this might accomplish more than killing a few Romans. For I believe that until we find a leader for the nation, none of us will be safe. None of us will be free. On my way, I meant to spread the word of revolt through the country as I passed, so that I might offer this man the strength of a nation. Now, that's what I'd planned. It's for you to approve or disapprove. I stay or I go, as you decide. This sword belonged to a man of my name who fought long ago in the army of the great warrior Judas Maccabeus. Take it and offer it to the man of Galilee. My allegiance goes with the sword. Yes! Aye, aye, aye. Where by the sword? Allegiance to the sword of the Maccabees. And to him who accepts it. Allegiance! Everything's quiet. Yes. Too quiet. I notice you didn't come forward to lay hands on the sword. No. Why not? Because I think you're going on a fool's errand. Maybe you're right. A man's on a fool's errand from the time he's born. But someday, some man may find what we're all looking for. Peace, happiness, a chance to live. You believe in what's going to happen. I believe in making it happen now. Yes, you proved that tonight. And as a result, you've brought danger on every man, woman, and child in this village. On Tamar and... Tamar? Why do you speak of her? I... because I... Yes. Now I remember. Always... Always you looked at Tamar in the square. Your look followed her to the well in the evening. Yes. You... 
I've loved her always. As I love her now. Joel. Shut up. What is this evil I hear? Is it true that you coveted the woman I've chosen to be your brother's wife? I said I loved her. You will put this thought from your mind, this love from your heart. That I can't do. If you could read my heart, you'd see. But you can't. All you know is your books of the law. You speak to me so, for your father. I know you could have me stoned for speaking like this. But for once, let there be truth between us. Joel, how can I give up a love that's as great as my love for Israel? You look at me, but you see only what you want me to be, not what I am. I forbid you. I'm not a scholar. I'm a patriot and a zealot. You? You are a zealot? Father, I... No, Zedek, this is my affair. You belong to that part, your violence... Violence is the only answer to Rome. But it must be a nation's violence. What else can save us? Your scrolls are dust. Your law is dead. Dead? Our law is alive with the breath of Moses and Abraham and all the prophets. Men were beasts until our law called them to be the chosen of the Lord. And the Lord himself came first into the minds of men through the word that is our law. If there is dust on our law, it is the dust of which the world was made. Father, I know you speak from your heart. But my heart speaks too. And I... I don't want to go in anger. You say go? Go where? On a journey I've planned. He's going to seek the Messiah. Some wonder worker Nathan told him about. You... You mean the carpenter of Nazareth? You're going to seek him? He may be the savior of our people. If you go from my house, you will no longer be my son. All my life I've obeyed you, without question. I can obey you no longer. Then go. Go before I forget the years I loved and cherished you. Go before I curse you. Take it. Don't you realize what an excellent match I've made for you? Yes, Father. Mm. Lamech held out for two dozen goats. <laughs> I'd have given him three dozen. You should rejoice at this betrothal. Yes, Father. Well, isn't every girl has a father with brains enough to marry her to a son of a scribe, huh? No, Father. Uh -huh. All right. You can go now. Hmm? Well, what is it? What is it? What is it? Rachel says she heard the prisoners have escaped. Escaped? Ay, 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 there'll be more trouble over this. Why do you bring bad news into my house?
with you anywhere. You were coming for me, weren't you? You said we'd leave the village tonight. Tomorrow. We are going. I'm going alone. Alone? The village is in great danger. I must get help if I can. But it's more than that. It's greater than the life of any one village or any one of us. What are you saying? I'm going in search of a man who may be the king that we need to lead us in open war against Rome. War? It must come if we're ever going to be anything but slaves. Why? Why must there be war? Why must men fight? I don't care anything about this king. All I want is to be your wife and bear your children. That's all I... Please take me with you. I can't take you with me. No. But it must be now. I may never have the courage again. You must have courage. You must wait. If my journey's successful, there may be a chance. A new life for all of us. If this man is the Messiah, then there's hope of freedom for Israel. I never saw him before, and yet he spoke to me as if he knew me. That's how I felt the first time he spoke to me. It was as if he called me by my name, Andrew. I'm seeking the man of Galilee. I heard he was near here. You found him? No, I, I mean Jesus of Nazareth. He who's called King of the Jews. This is he. But where are the multitudes that follow him? He came here to escape the multitudes. Then it is true he has many followers? They increase even as the flocks of a good shepherd. But he has more the look of a poor pilgrim than a king. His power is greater than that of any king, my friend. What sort of power? You mean he's a magician, as some people say? Well, he's been called worse names than that. I must speak with him. No. Not now. The Son of Man has come not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Jesus, thou Son of David, have mercy on me. What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Lord, that I may receive my sight. Believe. 
believe ye that I am able to do this? Yea, Lord. Receive thy sight. Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. that you will use it to draw our people together that we may smite our enemies. There's need for haste. All the country to the south is overrun by the Romans. But there are thousands like me, sworn zealots, ready to join your forces. Master, we offer you our allegiance and our swords. All they that take up the sword shall perish with the sword. My friend, he's the one man who has no use for it. No use for it? You mean he isn't ready to take up arms? He'll never take up arms. I don't agree with Andrew. I feel as you do, that our master must soon draw the sword. Come along with us. You and I together may persuade him. Which way do you go? To Jerusalem, for the Feast of the Passover. My village lies on that road. Then why not? I would like to know more of this man. For he certainly has great authority. He has indeed. I'm Joel, son of Lamech, the scribe. I am called Judas. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I'm convinced he'll never take up arms unless he's forced to. You're right. You know, there were certain men before you joined us who tried to seize him and force him to be king. Yes? What happened? He sensed their purpose and escaped them. If those men had succeeded, the history of Israel might have been changed. But they did not succeed. Over that farthest hill lies my village. The master will pass through it. He has friends in every village. I'm going on. This time, no blunders, Claudian. Post sentries around the wall, only keep them out of sight. Come.
can enter, but no one leaves the village tonight. You understand? You have your orders. I'll be at the inn. Keep a strict watch. These people have a fondness for striking in the dark. Celebration tonight? Yes. He's the marriage of Zadok, son of the scribe. Zadok? I remember him. So he's getting married? Mm, to Tama, daughter of Jamuel. Toast to the bride. Well, why don't you drink? Why, I've had enough. I, <laughs> we, most of the village thought that Tama would marry Joe. Who's Joe? A Zadok's brother. Might he be the fellow I knocked down in the square? I, uh... Hmm? Yes? Yes, why? <laughs> so Zadok stole his brother's bride. Oh, no, it's all according to our customer, no. You have some strange customs, you Israelites. Go on, drink. You were only tasting your wine. You're trying to get me drunk so that I'll talk. But it's no use, I can't tell you anything. Do you recognize this? It's a dagger. It's a little memento I picked up the night the prisoners escaped. I, I don't know anything about that. You don't happen to know to which one of your village zealots this dagger belongs. Zealots? No, 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 I told you. I... You lie. You're probably one of them yourself. If I break your arm, you might talk. Go ahead. Break my arm. Kill me. I still can't tell you anything. There. You'll talk when the time comes. Bring more wine. We'll drink a toast to the bridegroom. What feast is this? The wedding feast of Tamar and Zadok, son of the scribe. The wedding feast? sons as you have. I have but one son. Your pardon, Rabbi. These two are one by sacred vow. Lord, lift thy son and bless them now. accept the sword. That's why I've called you together. The time has come to force his hand. We can do it. How, Joel? He'll reach our village tonight or tomorrow. 
I can't go to him because he knows me, but one of us, you, Laban, will approach him saying that your father lies sick of a fever. For what purpose? He never refuses the sick. He'll follow where you lead him. You'll lead him here. The rest of you will wait here. And when he comes? We'll seize him and hold him prisoner. Then together with Judas and other of his disciples who feel as I do that he should use his power, we'll proclaim him king. You're sure he's worthy to be our king? I'm sure. I've seen his great works. Everywhere people greet him as a savior. His disciples would die for him. All that's needed is for him to become a man of action. It's a bold idea. That appeals to me. I say it's worth trying. Aye, aye, aye. aye, aye. Then by tomorrow, there will be a king in Israel. The dawn breaks. The night is done. Hail to the marriage day. <laughs> I must speak with you. The Roman is at the inn. Why, I must leave you now to prepare to receive a guest. Centurion, <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's trying to find out who the zealots are in our village. He remembered your name. My name? Yes. He had this. I stole it when he fell asleep. I see. How many men is he with him this time? He's alone. Alone? Yes. Thanks, Nathan. disciples of Jesus. He must have come during the night. Now, you know what to say when I give you the signal? My father lies sick unto death. Come to my home, O master, and heal him. Wait here. Joe. You have returned. Yes, I, I came back to... To ask my forgiveness. To make your peace with your father, eh? I... Yes, I... Sure. Don't forget the past. You will be my son again, eh? Come. We will drink a glass of wine together. Then we'll go on with your life as I had planned it. No, Father, I can't. I've set my hand to a certain task. So far, I've failed, and yet... You set out to find the Nazarene? I found him. But I... But you were disappointed in him. I told you there was no virtue in the man. Oh, he has virtue, but he uses it only to preach his doctrine. His doctrine? His blasphemy? What does that hypocrite know of the law? He's not a hypocrite, Father. He believes what he teaches. You defend him. Perhaps you believe in him. No, Father, I told you. Yes, that's why you won't go back to my teaching. This man has poisoned your mind with his crazy rantings. You're wrong. I've heard this magic is such that it turns father against son, son against father. Why do you judge him when you don't know him? I'd like to have him in judgment before me. I would soon show you. Judge not, that ye be not judged. Master. So, our village is honored by the visit of a carpenter. Rabbi, ask you. Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? How readest thou? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. And who is my neighbor? A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, 
he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? He that showed mercy on him. Go and do thou likewise. Master, my... Father. Rabbi! Rabbi! Joe, come quickly. Something has happened at the inn. Your brother, Sadok. What? What are you saying? Come! Come! My day of joy is turned into night. My soul is broken within me. <laughs> way of taking vengeance. He's going to send us out to the Romans. That's why he left the village. His plan to set up a king was just a blind. Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Please. Please. Let me pass. I come to take the body of my son. Almighty God, 
What curse is on my house? Joel, why do you kneel beside this man, the murderer of your brother? This man is my brother also. Disregard all previous orders. Spare the village. Arrest him. Jerusalem. But I've been locked up here for I don't know how many days. What about me? I've had the guard you, haven't I? You made me miss the big spectacle on the hill today. Triple crucifix. People fainted. All kinds of excitement. And I had to miss it because of you. the one from outside. Will you accept the thanks of a Roman? The thanks? You saved my life. Well, then why was I arrested? To save you from your own people. Now, my friend, you're free. Free? Free? I should have come to you sooner. I've been on sick leave until today. Today, I was on duty. You mean I can go? Now? <laughs> Wait. One thing I would know. Yes? Why did you risk your life for mine? I was your enemy and yet you helped me. Why? Because I... Because of a man I met and followed for a while. A great and simple man who taught me it was right to show mercy to anyone in distress. To anyone? Yes. It's a strange teaching. Who is this man? He's called Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth? I owe my life to him. And I, just now, as he hung on the cross, I thrust this spear into his side. to bring me here. I didn't know why. The centurion. Well, then he must have known somehow that you... That we were... Oh, come on. Oh, I, I waited not knowing anything. Just waiting and hoping. I'm free. We'll go back together. To our village. Of course. No, no, Joel. They still hate you for helping the Romans. Even though the village was spared, they, they might kill you. But I must go back. Oh, no, no. It... Tamar, I went out seeking a leader. I know now that I found him. His truth is mine. I must share it. But, Joel, it... 
He died today on the cross. If I die tomorrow, what does it matter? The truth and the teaching will go on. <laughs> <laughs>